He is undoubtedly one of Kenya's unsung heroes whose clamor for multi-party democracy marked a watershed in Kenya's political history. It's precisely because of this crusade that he found himself on a collision course with the regime of retired President Moy. His mistake, he says, was to clamor for the repeal of Section 2A of the old constitution, which outlawed multipartism. He got detained for it. During his imprisonment, he suffered a massive stroke, forcing him to seek treatment locally and in England. How are you, sir? Very good. And now the 74-year-old is suing the state for alleged torture and mistreatment he underwent in the hands of government agents. He is seeking 9,153,000 shillings as special damages, besides an unspecified amount for medical expenses, general, exemplary and aggravated damages. In a suit filed at the High Court by J. N. Boru and company advocates against the Attorney General, the former Kiharu MP says the government mistreated him while in detention in order to destroy his spirit of fighting for democracy and good governance. He also believes that the former regime intended to kill him by poisoning his food. He states in court documents that on or about 3rd May 1990, he and former Starehe MP Charles Rubia convened a press conference in Nairobi calling for the repeal of Section 2A of the Constitution, the dissolution of Parliament and the holding of free and fair elections and an end to the mismanagement of public affairs. He says his actions angered the Moy regime and he and Rubia were roundly, falsely and maliciously accused of being actuated by sinister motives in calling for the reintroduction of multi-party democracy. Instead, Rubia believes the illegal detention was actuated by malice because he and Rubia were not the only people who called for the repeal of the said provision. He says he was arrested by special branch officers on the 4th of July 1990 and was detained in various locations until he was hospitalized at Nairobi Hospital a year later. Matiba says he continues to suffer excruciating physical pain and mental anguish and his health has been on a downhill. He argues the stroke has greatly compromised his ability to participate in politics and affected his administrative and leadership qualities, forcing him to quit politics and thereby denying him his freedom of association and assembly. According to him, the police had no lawful excuse to torture him for merely introducing democracy in the country. He argues that the democracy did not in any way constitute a danger to the public. He wants the court to declare that his rights and freedom were violated by police officers and therefore entitled to compensation. Sylvia Tibet for Monday's special.